Hello everyone, this is MJ and you are at my channel called Reading This Life. My channel is where we talk fiction, friends, and fun. Today, it's my bookish bulletin, August wrap up. And remember, before we get started, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, Garb August was amazing, amazing, amazing this year. I had such a good time co-hosting, planning, creating, um, acting. I had such, such good fun with the gag, the Garb August Alliance group, um, it was just amazing. Ollie, thanks so much for including me. Um, really thankful to be a part of it and can't wait for the next round. We have a lot of books to cover. Purposefully, I did not do a lot of my community tab this week um, because as most of you know, I have been under the weather. I'm still struggling with a cough. I'm supposedly two minutes into this video and I think I cough for a minute and a half already. So, um, we are going to go through the one or two things that I put to you on my community tab. I'm going to talk to you about the books that I've read in August. Also going to talk about what has been on the channel within the last week. Um, what will be coming up on the channel. Um, also what I am reading right now and what I hope to read within the week. So there we go. All right, so let's see if we can get this done. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you were all taking care of yourself so you could take care of others. <clears throat> it's that weird time where it's like, like today it was 90 degrees where I live. And, um, you know, last week we had morning temperatures dipping into the 40s. So everybody, like a lot of people I know have like this head cold congestion thing going on. So we are all just trying to survive. Okay, so one thing in my community tab is that I'm back on Instagram. Whoa, yeah. So the reason I'm back on Instagram is because I did not want to flood your feed with my nonsense. So um, I decided to open up my Instagram, booktuberstagram, because I'm not a bookstagrammer. I'm a booktuber and um, I fail a lot. Like last time when I was on Instagram, I was following and doing all those things to to be included in, in the bookstagram community and that's not me. That really isn't me. So I've been following more of my fellow video creators and some subscribers that I know. Um, so that's been fun. I've just been dipping my toe taking photos and all that stuff, posting reviews, um, giving you an idea as to what I might be currently reading. So that's been fun. Um, so uh, there is a uh, link in my description box uh, if you wanna check out any of my socials, feel free. Okay, so we did that, we announced that. Then I asked how your August was going. Let's see, 31% said about average reading. 29% said started strong, still strong. 23% said reading less than average, life. And 17% said started started strong, fizzling out. So there was that. Uh, let's see. I shared some stuff. <clears throat> All right. This past Saturday, I asked, September is National Library Card Sign-Up Month. So if you don't have a library card, you can go to your local branch and get one. It's wonderful. Libraries are gateways to knowledge. Libraries are gateways to just so many different things. My library has like power tools and construction equipment that you can rent, like no joke. I encourage you, go and support your local library. If you can't financially, support them by signing up, taking out a book, patronizing their book sales, all that good stuff. It all helps. So 66% of you said, yes, I use it all the time. 
19% said yes, but I don't use it enough. And 15% said no, I don't have one. And all I have to say is that if you have one of these or one of these and your library is listed on the Libby app, you are missing out on eBooks being sent to your Kindle from the Libby app. So library books you can read on your devices. If you want a tutorial on how to do that, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to show you. Okay, so yes, go out and support your local libraries. And that's basically it. So that was it for polls and quizzes. I, I, I purposefully made it light because number one, I was under the weather and number two, I had a ton of reading to try and get done. So let's get into what I read. Reading challenge. We made our goal last month. So our goal was 76 books for the year. Right now I'm at 88 books for the year. That's excellent. That's the most I think I've ever read in my life. And I attribute it to all of you and my fellow creators and just being inspired to read and really embracing it. So let's see where we're at. The first thing that we read was Sorority Girls of Satan. That wasn't so hot. I gave it three stars and that was being very kind. It did not read the way I thought it would. It was something totally different. Um, <clears throat> it just wasn't my cup of tea. It just wasn't. Uh, it could have been well, it could have gone in another direction that probably would have benefited the story more. Um, but I gave it three stars. I finished it. That was my first Garbagus read, what can I say? Then I did my first Harlequin romance, and this was by Heather Graham, not the actress, Tangled Threat, and this was a Harlequin intrigue. This was my first Har Harlequin that I ever read, and uh, Sarah the Bookish Knitter said, it's not the best one, you could have done better. So I gave it three stars. I thought it was okay. <clears throat> okay, so here's my review on Goodreads. A bit of over underwhelmed for my first Harlequin. Enjoyed the mystery, the unexpected haunted story, and cult making an appearance. For a romance, it wasn't very much and quite predictable. Didn't love it, didn't hate it. So I gave it three stars. And that was Tangle Threat, and that was an ebook. Then, oh, this was so good. Oh, this was so good. This is Open Throat, and this is by Henry Hoke. Four stars. I found this on Scribd. I was originally looking for a killer animal book, like an audiobook that I could listen to, and I couldn't quite find anything, but I found this, and I thought it was adorable. Adorable and different. So Open Throat, <clears throat> here's my review basically. Four stars. What a fun and unique perspective. Really enjoyed this fresh take. It says, a lonely, lovable, queer mountain lion narrates the star-making fever dream of a novel. A queer and dangerously hungry mountain lion lives in the drop-devastated land under the Hollywood sign. Lonely and fascinated by humanity's foibles, the lion spends their days protecting the welfare of a nearby homeless encampment, observing obnoxious hikers complain about their trauma, and in quiet moments grappling with the complexities of their gender identity memories of a vicious father and the indignities of the sentience. It really is well done. I equate it to, okay, so you know how much I love um, the boy, the horse, no, the boy, the, you know the one I'm talking about. The boy, the horse, the fox and the mole, is that it? You know the book I'm talking about. I'll put a picture here. This had that same vibe, all right, whatever that is that makes that book magic. But this would have been the flip side. The same type of feeling to the book, but make it dark, make it a little dangerous, and make it a little different. But I honestly loved this book. I really did. I thought it was so fresh and so unique. And again, this is, it's available in a number of different places, but I listened to it on Scribd. Four stars. Definitely going to read it again. I may actually get it to add to my collection. It was that enjoyable. Then we did Criminali's um, Patreon book club. This was Radis New Yorkus by Hunter Shea. 
This is a killer animal book and this is rats, baby. I gave it three stars. So my review says, the first two thirds were much more enjoyable and had better storytelling than the last third. Of course the pace picked up, but something was lacking. Recommended for a fun read. Yeah, it, I was a little underwhelmed to the end. Um, the characters were enjoyable, if I remember correctly. The exterminators are a husband and wife team that are going through divorce or have been divorced. Um, so there's that relationship. And um, there is a doctor that's involved and there is some type of a um, pesticide that's involved that may be doing the opposite effect. But it was fine. It was fine. All right, then I read my first executioner book. And this was Mac Bullen, Bloodsport. He's getting a handful of fist right there. This was fun. It was fun. Let's see. I gave it four stars for my first men's adventure book. Uh, my review says my first men's adventure book. For Garbog, it's 2.0. There definitely is a formula followed. Enjoyed the action and severity of the last few chapters. Written in the 1980s, it definitely reflects the time, although I really don't understand the subtle but frequent fat-shaming snide remarks made in the early chapters. Recommended for fans of the series and for anyone wanting to sample the genre. Yeah, there was something, it was like every page, this character would just make, like, insults about uh, another male's body frame, you know, about how they were puffy or had you know, um, uh, extra weight or they weren't, they weren't the tough guy, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, ugh, it just, it just didn't sit well with me, but I just, I kept reading, but I, it was unnecessary. It didn't bring anything to the story. And if anything, it just, it made me dislike the character, you know? So there's that. And you'll get that in different books written in those times. I don't even remember when that was written. Uh, let's see. Executioner was written in 1982. Not saying that it makes it right, but 1982. Um, cool uh, bad guys in here. We have the Gemini twins, a brother-sister duo uh, that are trying to, to secure um, military-grade weapons. <coughs> It was a lot of fun. Then we got into, ooh, Lupe. Okay, so the next one was Lupe. I have no idea where my copy is. Maybe it walked off. I don't know. Maybe Garbagastina took it with her. Lupe was a good time. I really enjoyed Lupe. I gave it four stars. It was just good. You think it's about something, but it's actually about something else. I didn't write a review for this. Did I do a review on Lupe? I think I did. I will post the card here for Lupe. It was really good, really good. All right, then. Homicide Department. Homicide Department by Ed McBain. Homicide Department, Ed McBain. This is my first McBain. And this is a book of short stories. Yeah, that's kind of garbagusty on the front. God love her, she died. Um, <clears throat> this is a bunch of stories written by several crime authors, um, Ed McBain being the first one. Then we have uh, Ellery Queen, <clears throat> Robert Block, Michael Brett. There's a few. Short book, um, and I really just took my time with this. I'm not one for reading crime fiction, um, unless it has that little supernatural edge to it, but straight crime fiction, eh, it's not really my deal. But I'll tell you what, I enjoyed each story, had a different vibe to it, and some of them just ended on such massive cliffhangers. Like, it was just really, really good. Really enjoyed it. I gave that four stars. <laughs> and I'll read you my review. A really good compilation of short crime fiction. I have nothing to compare it to. So four stars for me. There you go. All right. And then Lady Chatterley's Lava. I'll leave a review card for my review here. I gave Lady Chatterley's Leather Lover four stars. Then, Flowers in the Attic, I did a rant and, an, and a review. I'm lucky to give that one three stars. I'll leave a card here for you. Yeah. Not a fan, not a fan. Nope, sorry. 
not continuing with the um, series any further. Then I needed something completely different. So I think it was um, celebrity books, books written or about a uh, celebrity. So I read Holy Cow by David Duchovny. This was my first five star read of Garb August and it was awesome. It was so good. My review just says, Dear Lord, how I love Duchovny. Let me count the ways. So Holy Cow is basically about a cow on a farm that breaks out and um, <clears throat> they find themselves on a journey to India because Elsie, the cow, realizes that they worship cows, um, that they they're have a godlike status and um, she wants to experience that. So it was a lot of fun. We have a turkey, we have a pig, there's different animals that go on this journey and there's different um, critters that they that they meet. But Duchovny is so dry and snarky and just everything that you love about him was poured into this book. I did the audiobook for this and I'm telling you, five stars. If you need a palate cleanser, something of a pickup, I think it was three hours long. It was just chef's kiss. Absolute chef's kiss. So, so good. Goodreads says, a rollicking globe-trotting adventure with a twist, a four-legged heroine you won't soon forget. Definitely not. Really good. Then I read The Howling. and The Howling, I gave four stars. This was um, an audiobook that I did. <clears throat> and it was borderline excellent. Like, I really enjoyed the story. It wasn't predictable, sure. But I felt the tension and I was gripped and it, I really, really enjoyed it. Especially, it was published in 1977. I'll put a review card here, and I talk about the trifecta of werewolf books from like 1980, or werewolf movies from 19, 1981. So we had um, The Howling, Wolfen, and An American Werewolf in London. Those were the three that werewolf books that were released, or werewolf movies that were released the same year. Excellent. Really, really good. Let's see. Okay. My review said, really enjoyed the book. I've seen the movie a few times. The book is slightly different, but still completely enjoyable. A fun retro werewolf movie. Yes, it was. If you've never read The Howling by Gary Brandner, check it out. Next. This was good too. I read this last week. This is I Know How This Ends by Imogen Markwell Tweed. I gave this five stars. This is my second five star read of Garb August. Now, how I got into this was... I was looking for <clears throat> cryptids, maybe, maybe like monsters, cryptids, something like that. And this popped up in Scribd. And this has to do with um, a fallen angel that lives a very quiet life and has um, a run in with a cryptid investigator. And it starts a friendship and it turns into something else. It's a very short audiobook. But it really is sweet. It is the sweetest story. Habris can see the future. And the story, the title of the story is I Know How This Ends. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's just, just beautiful. If you are looking for a different type of a romance, okay, um, this is more of a uh, LGBTQIA. This has... Um, a little bit of fantasy in it, a little bit of, not paranormal, but um, whatever you would consider like an angel. This is it. But it was just well done. I loved it. <clears throat> then I read, oh, I read two books. <clears throat> One of my Goodreads librarians out there, did you, were able to add this? Make sure you add it. It was an Aleister Crowley book. I don't know. It, the last week of Garb August is Anything Goes, and I really tried to make it Anything Goes, so I'm like, all right, let's get into learning about Aleister Crowley, and, you know, I read it. It was fine. Um, I also read the single story called The Vixen, which was like nine minutes long. Like, it's just a short story. Uh, it got one star from me. Yeah. So that was everything that I completed for Garb August. 
so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen books. Okay, fourteen books. There's short stories in there and stuff. Like, don't freak out over that number. Okay, then I was also reading <clears throat> Captain Blood. This is a was a buddy read over um, on my channel, and I, I put it down. I put it down. I'm like, I don't know, 113 pages in. I honestly started getting bored. So I put it down and I said, you know what? I'm going to pick it up sometime this month and I'm just going to, you know, move along with it. But it just didn't hold like, I don't know. It's a revenge novel, but it just wasn't, it wasn't ticking my boxes. Does that make sense? So mood reader, put it down. Mm -hmm, that's okay. What else didn't I finish? Did I DNF anything this month? Oh, plan nine from outer space. Yeah. I DNF'd it. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It dragged. I got 40% through and I'm like, you know what? It's over Johnny. Like, I just can't do it. The movie is bad, but the movie is way better than this novelization. Yeah, sorry. Just wasn't, it wasn't for me at all. Nope. All right. So that's everything that I read for Garb August. All right. Now, what am I reading right now? Um, let's see. I recently finished a Bigfoot book. That was today. I'm reading American Psycho now, as well as Dune. Uh, so I have American Psycho on ebook, and I have Dune. I have the physical book, and I have an audio book that I'm listening to. All right. What? Uh, so that's what I'm reading this week. Dune, I'm stretching out. I'm only doing like two or three chapters, two or three chapters um, a day. Uh, American Psycho, and then I am, <clears throat> I have New Millennium Boys I am finishing this week. This is coming out in September. I'll be doing a dedicated review on this book. There was a little bit of some, a little bit of some controversy going on with this uh, last week or so. So stay tuned for the full review. Um, I think, you know, everything is, is a-okay, but uh, yeah. We're going to, we're going to go through this one. And I also have another one on deck and that is, and this is an arc that, um, I'll be reviewing and I'll be doing a dedicated review on this too. So, uh, <clears throat> that's all the stuff that I'm reading. Now, what has been on the channel video wise, we've had a few, haven't we? Okay, so let's go into our video. <clears throat> Garb Augustina two weeks ago did the last book two bulletin. Sorry about that, but yeah, she did. Uh, we did a Kindle tip. That was fantastic. Did a full review of The Howling. We did a full review of, well, Garb Augustina did a full review of Lady Chatterley's Lover. We had a support small book two. I did the reader problems tag. Garb August pep talk. Uh, September reading possibilities. Goodbye, Garb Augustina. That was a performance. Thank you very much. I announced Occult Detective October, a brand new booktube event with a cast of wonderful co-hosts that's going to be happening in October. Uh, support small booktube. And yesterday, how many do I need? That is a booktube real talk about the variances of different editions coming out and what makes us want to buy multiple copies. So that is what's been happening on the channel. What will be coming up on the channel? Well, today you have this. Um, and uh, just so I can get my nose back into reading because having this cold, I mean, really did knock me out. Um, it's sad that I got it the last week of Garb August because when I get sick, I like to sleep and I can't read long without falling asleep. I can't read at night. Um, my morning routine is off because I'm sleeping in. So it's just one of those deals where I'm trying to play catch up now with myself and that'll happen, you know, no pressure or anything like that. But I have some videos that are filmed. They're just not edited. So, um, bear with me while I'm still recovering. Okay. Okay. And, uh, what else? Um, Saturday, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we have in the hopper. I may just come on and do a live and chit chat with y'all. How's that? Would you like that? Yeah, maybe we'll do that. No interview or anything like that. We'll just talk booktube stuff. How's that? Okay. Talk booktube with MJ. 
All right, this has gone way too long. I hope you are all doing well. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. I'm trying to do that myself. Um, and I will see you in my next video, whether that be sooner or later. So until next time, everyone, goodbye for now and happy reading. Happy September. Man, we're in September already. All right. Take care.